There's a huge slot car track in the basement of the Jacob Javits Convention Center. Most folks think of electric vehicles as small insect-like critters, like the Think City, Mini E, and Mitsubishi IMEF. Sure, they're cute, but could you see yourself driving one? What if you could drive a fully electric-powered spacious crossover like the Chevy Equinox? Tell me about this all-electric Chevy Equinox. We start with a great car. I mean, the main message is this is a award-winning 2010 Equinox. It was pretty light and pretty streamlined already. It used to get 32 miles per gallon from GM. So it's a great platform. It's, uh, as far as we know, it's the largest electric car. Um, it goes 150 miles on a charge. It goes zero to 60. We publish eight seconds, but wink, wink, nod, nod, it'll really do seven, uh, maybe six. And it goes uh, 90 miles per hour top speed. It's in interior is and exterior are exactly the same as the original. So it's a familiar drive, you get in, put your foot on the brake, turn the key, put it in drive, and uh, off you go. Are there changes to the, to the dashboard? Or very, no, very I mean, minor? we run the, the gauges, but I mean, it's the same, same dash. It's a traffic jam, but nobody's right. using any gasoline down here. Exactly. So you started out by electrifying the, the Saturn Sky and Pontiac Solstice. Right, exactly. Um, you know, we went with a two-seater first just to keep the variables down. Um, this much more mainstream car, uh, not quite as as sexy looking, but you know it seats five adults comfortably. All the cargo space is exactly uh, as the original. So, with a 150 mile range, that covers the daily needs of a whole lot of folks. Yeah, the average American drives 40 a day, so 150, you know, will cover you 95 percent of your days. Most, you know. What about, what about charging times? How long will it take to recharge? Uh, if you depleted it all the way down, which would be rare, it's four hours on, on a 220. Uh, most of the time people drive their 40 miles and uh, you charge in an hour. So, you know, an interesting thing is the power steering, which is really required on a little track like this, right? You know, that was one of the trickier things to do with electric cars because you don't have the hydraulic pump and the off running off the fan belt. So how do you how do you do it? So this is electric power steering. So like right now, as you're going straight, using zero power when you, only when you turn and need it, a little motor kicks in and helps you steer. But it feels identical to um, to what you're used to. So all we're hearing is that's just gear noise basically? Yeah, there's a little gear noise in the back. Inside, you know, in an indoor arena like this, it's a little louder than. Yeah, you're gonna notice it. The yeah. window's down. Yeah. So everything is maintained. Air conditioning. The, everything. The how much does the does running the heater and, and, and things like that? Well, heat we get. We uh, our motors are water cooled, so um, uh, you know we drive heat off of that. But that's, air conditioning, that's pretty of course. Cool. So your 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 cabin heat actually comes right. from the motors. Yep. That's yep. very good. Yep. Instead of depleting your batteries. Exactly. Excellent. Yep. And that's that's um, pretty unique. Yeah, I think so. A lot of the motors are air cooled that people use. We use a water cooled one. Uh, it keeps the motor smaller. Um, what what's really unique about this car and the reason we can push a 3,500 pound car for 150 miles is our drivetrain is is different in that we use two motors, one for each wheel. So no differential. Everybody else that we've ever seen uses one big motor going through a differential, and maybe even a transmission. Uh, and the differential just uh, you know sucks eight percent out. So we have a motor on each wheel, and it's a software differential. So it's uh, perfectly efficient. So uh, motor directly coupled to the wheel. You're not going to get any more efficient than that. The drive the drive wheels are the front wheels. Uh, rear. Rear wheels. Rear wheels. Front, which is basically electronics and uh, batteries. This is where the bulk of the battery weight is. Uh, the other thing about the car is we really distributed the batteries in all the weights, so we have almost a 50-50 weight split, almost exact. So there's batteries here and in the back, uh, where, the to... where the gas tank used to be used for another set of batteries. And you know, some things to note, like this is the original ECM. 
engine control module, you know, fuels box, braking. I'd love to kick the brakes on this and say these are GM brakes, we don't touch them. Um, GM airbags, we don't touch them. All the safe, this thing's got six airbags, all the safety restraints, all the, it's a five star, you know, from GM side and frontal impact. So it's a very, very safe vehicle. We don't mess with any of that. So if you want to get way down low here, you can see that unique drivetrain I was talking about. You can just see the bottom of it, but there's two Remy motors in there, kind of butt to butt, each going straight out to the axle through a planetary. So that's what makes it super efficient. So it's a rear wheel drive. A uh, car with a 50-50 weight split so the, there's enough weight on the tires that you keep superior uh, traction.